Information desk. Yes, sir, I'll take care of it. Hey, you changed your hairdo. I like it. Well, thank you. He's been trying to get a job here as a photographer. Well, I'd like to see a fellow like that get a job here. Well, that's funny. I was thinking the same thing. Sorry, Mr. Early, you may as well stop trying. You see, we can't hire a photographer who hasn't had newspaper experience. And I can't get experience without being hired. Look, Miss Bennett, I can't afford to stop trying. This is good. I think we can use it. Come with me. Well, when did this come in? David, look at this. How did you get it? Well, I uh, just happened to be passing by. That's good. We can use it. That's what I thought. All right, whatever your name is, you've just sold a picture. Congratulations. Well, oh, thanks, Mr. Bennett, but uh, you see, the picture's not for sale. What I want is a job. Put me on for a week on a trial basis. Stop me as of today, and you own this picture because I took it on your time. Look, young fellow, I like to see ambition. But you can't pull that sort of thing on a newspaper. No. You'll have to forgive me. You see, I have no newspaper experience. You got it all figured out, haven't you? We could use another man. All right, put him on for a week. Thanks, Mr. Glover. Take Skinner out of the doghouse and put him in. Well, you got your wish. I feel like a lad. You know, the guy with a lamp, rub it, and the porter shows up with the rent money or a light lunch. <laughs> Incidentally, Miss Bennett, uh, what's this doghouse business? Oh, I was afraid you would ask me. It's lost and found dogs. It's not much of a job, but you might get some experience. Robert. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. It's only for a week, but... It's my toe in the door. Who knows what it might lead to. Give a shout. Thanks. I hate street accidents. Can't stand the sight of blood. You can tell I took this one with my eyes shut. To me, a picture's a picture. How did it go? I'm not sure. You can't use any. No, but... I didn't think you could. 
Why did you take so many? This may be the last chance I have. I want to make it count. I can understand that. Everybody feels like that the first day, but after a while... After you're... a while, I may not be here. I don't have any days to waste. Could you have dinner with me tonight? Well, I... You're not free? Well, yes, I'm free, but I, I was just thinking if you'd like an advance in your pay, I think I could arrange it. Well, that won't be necessary. Do you have any objection to having dinner with me? No, not at all. If you can stand my cooking. I'll take a chance. This is the address. That's very nice of you. Thanks. Want some more coffee? Thanks. Who's this, your landlord? He's nothing of the kind. He's a dentist. And a very good one, from Portland. His picture's there because I love him and I expect to marry him. When? Well, he practices in Portland and I have a standing offer of a job with the Portland Herald. That'll be a mistake. A dentist should be seen twice a year. Not that one. I go up to Portland to see him every week and I can get away from the paper. You must think a lot of your bridge work. I love it. Then you're, uh, you're gonna work after you're married. Until I'm bogged down in babies. I don't think I'd want my wife to work. I don't think you've thought about it very much. Yeah, I guess you're right. You still haven't told me when you're gonna be married. Well, I'm not sure. Maybe in a couple of months. Whenever I'm ready to leave here. Why? A couple of months? That doesn't give me much time. I guess it's time for you to go. This is the kind of living room I'd like to have. You ought to see the place I live in. You could fit my whole apartment into your bedroom. Blink those long lashes of yours, you knock over a tripod. Ellen, can you be honest with me? Of course, why not? You invited me here tonight. Why? I don't know, Jack. I suppose I felt sorry for you. Ellen, nobody has ever been as nice to me as you have. You're spoiling me for the rest of the world. You'll get along. Incidentally, that's a very bad habit you have. Leaving your latchkey under the doorman. I think you'd better go. Good night, Ellen. Good guy's flighting with the undertaker. Stay with him for a while. The romance might be interesting. Joe. I can't get through without help. You'll have to pull me. All right, now reach your arms out and look up towards the sky. 
help me with Thanks, you. Joe. Hey, where are you going? I'll drown. There's a guy in trouble down there. See if you can help him. I'm going to call an ambulance. Daily record. That shot was really a beautiful piece of newspaper photography. It was luck. I just happened to be passing by. It was more than luck. What do you mean? It was lucky you were around at the time, but just being there doesn't get the shot. Oh, don't undersell luck. Just pray that it holds out. Now, luck's mighty important in this racket. But unreliable. After a while, you won't have to depend on that. You'll develop contacts who'll phone and tip you off to things. Yeah, I guess you're right. See you later. So long. Good luck. Early. Another good picture. How'd you happen to get it? Well, I was just passing by. Yeah. The next time you just happen to be passing by, suppose you call the desk so we can get a story to go with it before you bring your picture in. This morning we had the only picture in town, but we didn't have a story. Early. What we're trying to do on this paper is to put out the best sheet we can. We're trying to do this together. We're not competing with each other. Understand? I understand. Tell Thurman to come in, will you please? Thurman! City desk? Yeah. Yeah. City desk. Thurman? Yeah, he's around someplace. Fire? Where? Yeah, I'll give him the message right away. Yeah, got it. Anything doing early? Not a thing, Thurman. Not a thing. By the way, Flint. Press. I don't care if you're the mayor. People trapped us there, and you ain't helped us get them out. to be passing by. Well, maybe you're right. He's certainly lucky enough. He's also alert, and he has one other qualification for the assignment. He's here. Yes, that's important. None of the others will be back in time? No. Not a one. All right. Tell him to come in and see me. Right. Good afternoon, Mr. Aladdin. No matter what you may hear, I did not set that building on fire. Is David still riding you? You mustn't mind him. His bark is much worse than his bite. Please, I wish you wouldn't use that expression. Jack, you've got an assignment. Lost and found dogs? No, a real assignment. And you better hurry in and see David before he changes his mind. I'll be around and see you tonight. No, you can't do that. I have to go to pull. Leave the key under the map. You've heard of Nick Palmer. Yes, sir. He's managed to squirm out of several well-earned prison sentences. He's being booked today. He'll probably wriggle right out. Your job is to go down there and get a picture of him. Sounds easy. Anything particular you like in the way of angles, sir? Yes. I'd like to see his face. Well, sure, but... Listen, all the papers in town will be covering the criminal courts building just in case. But Palmer doesn't cooperate with photographers. The stuff in the morgue is five years old. And that's only with his hat covering his face or the back of his head. We'd like to get more. I'll get it, sir. Early, you don't seem to... Never mind. Thank you, sir. Early. Yes, sir. Are you from the South? No, sir. Then cut out the sir. Right. Nick didn't get here yet, did he? Uh, what are you going to do, kid? Take a picture? I'm going to get an exclusive. Oh, you are, huh? Well, how about sharing it with us? Here he comes! 
Don't try it, boy, unless Nick Farmer gives you an okay. No, that's fine. Isn't this next car? I don't think I know you. Well, that's easily fixed. Jack Early, the Daily Record. I was happier the way it was before. Is it people in general you don't like, or, or just me in particular? You can't be me. You don't know me well enough to dislike me. Must be people in general, huh? Go away. On the other hand, you uh, seem to dislike me enough for us to be old friends. Uh, Miss... Uh... It's Mrs. Mrs. Nick Palmer. Now, please go away. Nick's wife. Now I'm really impressed with Nick. Uh, Nick's going to pose for me when he comes out. I changed my mind. Don't go away. I want to be here when you get Nick to pose for you. You think he won't? Uh, listen, sweetheart, I have a way of getting people to do what I want them to. This is your chance. Here he comes. Will you pose for me, Mr. Farmer? Hey, don't point that thing at me. It might go off and hurt someone. It'll be a bonus for me if I get an exclusive of you, Mr. Farmer. Exclusive? You must be new around here. You know, Mr. Farmer, if you keep on acting the way you do, the public will get an impression that you're a crook. What? If I don't get this picture, my paper will dig up that old one of you covering up your face. After all, you're a businessman. Hiding behind your fedora like that, uh, who's going to have confidence in your perfectly respectable enterprises? Now, why not try it my way? Just give me a couple of seconds, and tomorrow morning you'll be delivered with a milk looking like George Washington. I promise you. You know, I don't know whether you're a bright young man or a liar. People that lie to me aren't very bright. I know it. You check me by what appears in tomorrow's paper. I will. What about my picture? All right, make it fast. Thanks, Mr. Palmer. That fast enough? You know, I like bright young men. You know where I live? Be there at 4 o'clock tomorrow. See me. I'll be there, Nick. I'll be reading the papers, too. Did you get it? How did you do it? Hey, did he pose for you? We're all set, then. This does it, Ellen. You won't need this for a minute. No. Your boy came through. He got Palmer's face all right. Yeah, my boy came through. I didn't know it was impossible. I'd almost say he got Palmer to post for him. Well, however he managed to get it, I think he's proved himself. Which means you'd like to keep him. Is that it? We'd be fools if we didn't. Oh, I don't know, Ellen. I just don't know. Everything he's done means boosted circulation, but I don't like him. Maybe that's because you don't understand him. He's told me a little about himself. The usual story, one meaningless job after the other. He's, he's never really had a chance to aim at anything. But he's got such a terrible, driving ambition. But that's a virtue, isn't it? The feeling I get from early is that he'd stop at nothing. And that's not a virtue. All he needs is a chance, and then he'll settle down. You don't like him. But he's a good man, and we can use him. I may be right. I'll think it over. I really will think it over. Uh, Ellen, you're going to Portland this weekend. Well, no, I, I'm a little busy. What's that? I have a lot of work I want to straighten out. I guess that was my first frustration. You're not listening. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little tired. No, you're not. You're annoyed at yourself. I don't know what you mean. You canceled a dentist appointment. I couldn't make it this weekend. I have too much work to do. And you left the key under the mat. 
Hey, wait a minute. Walk, do not run to the nearest exit. Hello? Hurley, what are you doing there? Well, there's a report that a lady slipped in the bathtub. Hello? Yes, David. No, of course, I'm perfectly all right. You did? Wonderful. Why, of course I'll tell him. Yes. See you Monday. Goodbye. Congratulations. What for? You're on the staff. Permanently. Thanks, Ellen. You were. I know I owe this to you. Nonsense. It was all your own doing. I'll always be grateful to you, Ellen. Jack, you need have no feeling of gratitude toward, toward me or anyone else. My feeling for you goes a lot deeper than gratitude. Two thirty in the afternoon. That's nice. That's the way people should live. For a moment, I was afraid you wouldn't approve. Do you like some coffee? Oh, uh, thanks. No. Uh, you invited me to come and see you. I thought now would be a good time. I thought I told you four o'clock would be a good time. I know, but I wanted to see you while you were still impressed with the fact that I made you look good, like I said. All right. We are impressed. Like you said. It was so flattering, the boss accused me of being your son. Hmm? Well, uh, just what do you expect to get out of impressing me? Uh, well, I, uh, I have a way of just happening to pass by at important moments and taking pictures. At the office, they call it uh, luck or journalistic instinct. I let them call it whatever they like. What do you call it? Planning. I see. Well, just where do I enter your planning? Well, I thought sometimes there might be something interesting happening that you'd know about in advance, and you could tip me off. And then sometimes there'd be favors I could do for you. That's what I would call pretty good planning. Are you uh, interested in money? Fascinated by money and by what money can buy. Did you ever hear of Harry Colton? <sighs> Who hasn't? He's a one-man crime wave. You've heard of him. Uh, could I have some of that coffee you offered? Sure. I'll get it. Now, Colton is what I call the criminal type. He used to be one of my collectors. But he developed molasses fingers, so I closed them out. And he went off the deep end. You know, he could be dangerous. Might even develop into a menace. Bound to kill somebody someday. Might even be a policeman. Well, I'm a photographer. I may be in a rut, but at least it isn't six feet deep. I advised Colton to leave town, but he didn't take my advice. I don't like to use violence, even against violence. That's where you come in. You'd like to see him framed, is that it? <laughs> I'd like to see him embarrassed. I happen to know of a pretty big project that the Colton is contemplating right now. A robbery. If it comes off, there'll be no stopping him. If he's caught, the police will dispose of him for me. What do you want me to do about it? You're going to take a picture of him committing that robbery and print it in your paper. Wouldn't it be simpler just to tip off the police? That wouldn't be very bright. The word would get around that there was a tip off. Now. If you caught him with your camera, it'd do the trick and look like an accident. You just happen to be passing by? Sure. It'll be worth a couple of grand to me. A thousand now and a thousand when the picture comes out in your paper. I'm in. Good. I told you he was a smart boy. I'll go get your down payment right now.
I'd go for the setup. Nick has everything I like. Including you. Well, if you're as bright as Nick thinks, you can get everything you like. Including you? That's not being bright. How come you married the Daily Double? He's not your type. I don't like to be talked to this way. Sorry. I'm just a growing boy. Well, if you want to continue growing, keep your mind on your camera. Maybe I can't. Come here. Sit down. Now, I want to explain this very carefully. This is the Grant Avenue entrance to the Golden State Department Store. concealed from everyone except those at whom the weapons were directed. After emptying the vault of its cash, the bulk of which was in bills of small denomination, the three coolly ordered one of the clerks to wrap the money in packages. This done, they then bound and gagged the several employees who had contact with them and strolled... Miss Bennett, please. Hello, Ellen. This is your old friend Aladdin. I've been rubbing that lamp again. I uh, just happened to pass by the Golden State this afternoon, uh, getting a few shots of the afternoon shoppers. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Relax. I'll bring them right over to your office. Department store each day. The culprits were hasty in the case of Walter Poole of Oakland, California, floor manager for the Golden State. Poole struggled free of his bonds soon after the robbers left and gave chase, only to lose them in the crowds outside the entrance. There are no fingerprints to aid the police in hunting the bandits, but some of the currency taken was in large denominations. The insurance company, when contacted by this commentator, asked me to announce that a reward of $5,000 will be paid for information leading to the capture of the bandits. In all, preliminary guesses put the total loss in the neighborhood of $200,000. This theft takes its place in San Francisco crime annals as one of the most... This is really remarkable. I didn't get their faces. I think that would be too much to ask unless you had known about it in advance. Yeah. I've asked David to give you a byline on this picture and he's agreed. When the paper hits the streets, Jack, you'll be famous. I'll endorse only the best cold creams. I don't think I'll be able to keep our date for dinner. 
Well, I'll be working late tonight anyhow. I'm sorry, Ellen. That's all right. I understand. Yeah, this could make a lot of trouble for us. But it ain't. You're right, and I'll explain to you why it ain't. Don't explain nothing. I'll show you why. Let's burn this one, too, if that's your idea of fun. I guess you don't know much about photography. As long as I have the negative, I can make as many of those as I want. Okay, you want to sell it to me, is that it? Wrong again. The negative's not for sale. It's a kind of a life insurance policy, if you know what I mean. If anything happens to me, the negative goes to my newspaper and, of course, the cops. Understand? Okay, that's your protection from me. Now, what's my protection from you? You buy your protection from me. I know that. How much? $25,000. Too much. Not for a man that picked up such a big bargain at a department store today. Uh, how do I know you're honest? Maybe you'll turn in the negative after I give you the dough. Why would I do that? They just make me exchange the twenty-five thousand for a gold medal and a pat on the back. Give it to him, Roy. The money, the money. Count it carefully. If you make a mistake, I'll be back. Some small bills. How do you carry it? Put it in here. Aren't you worried you might lose it on the way home? Oh, I'm not afraid. If I lose it, I'll just have to come back here for more. Well, I'll say goodbye now. I don't like to overstay my welcome. Wait a minute. You know, there's nothing in our deal that says I can't do this. <laughs> Shopping. Shirts, ties, shoes, a suit or two. See this suit? Two pair of pants. My wife hates it. And then again, she hates everything, especially me. All day long, I wheel and slow it around, bucking traffic. And what does she do? Place can ask. Tell me more. What did you say? Hey! No, the old crow downstairs. I gave her a couple of bucks. Sure smells in here. It didn't before you got here. You're not very neat, Harry. That's what you took. You can afford a vacuum cleaner. We checked them all. It's not here. Of course it's not here. As far as you're concerned, that negative's buried in Fort Knox. Well, it was a try. Never get the brass ring unless you reach for it. You're a philosopher. Wagon? 
Now I suggest you beat it. Answer me one thing. How'd you happen to get that picture of us? I don't just happen to do anything. You mean you were tipped off? Of course. Well, there are ways of finding out who tipped you off, and... One way of finding out is to ask me. What? Ask me. All right, who? Nick Palmer. Palmer. Now, if you boys will run along, I have a little house cleaning to do. I'm moving tomorrow, and I have to pack. Uh, thinking of moving in with Nick Palmer? I wouldn't advise it. He's not safe company anymore. Anybody that puts the finger on me is living on borrowed time. I'm not interested in the next future or a lack of it. Oh, uh, Colton. You know, I think you owe me something for that information. Yeah? How much? Well, let's see. This evens it up. Save it. Take good care of that negative. Well, stay early. There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Any time, Thurman. Any time at all. Well, what about right now? Any time but now, that is. You want to see me? Oh, yes, early. Sit down. You know, I, I've just figured out that your income is probably larger than your salary. What do you mean? Well, that robbery exclusive. Paid you a bonus. $25. Thanks. Thanks a lot. This is going toward a new car. I might as well tell you, I hired you reluctantly. I didn't like you. And now? I like your work. You're good for the paper. You're getting to be an important man around here. Well, thanks again. As I was saying, I didn't want to hire you. It was Ellen who talked me into it. Then I'll thank her. Ellen's a wonderful girl. Yes, I know. It's not only that she's one of the most capable people around here, but as a person, she's very fine. You don't have to sell Ellen to me. I'm not trying to. I just want to make sure that you appreciate her as well as I do. I don't know quite how to tell you this. After all, you are my boss. Speak freely. Well, uh, I don't think that what you've been saying is really any of your business at all. I guess you're right. Thanks. Thanks for the check. <laughs> Mr. Early is here. Tell him we're busy. I told him you were just about to have dinner, but he said it was very important. All right. Well, let's go into dinner anyway. Oh, you're too clever for me, darling. I like the way you people eat. What was so important? Remember I told you I wanted to make up for not coming through on that Colton deal? Remember I told you that if anything came up, I'd call you? Well, something has come up. I got a tip from the paper. They're gunning for you. Gunning for me? They're always gunning for me. They're gonna close up one of your places. The Bayview Club. When is this supposed to happen? Starting tonight. Thanks, Jack. Well, don't you think you ought to go down there and get everybody on their toes? No, I'll just make a phone call. Have you had your dinner? Well, uh... No. You're perfectly welcome to join us if you're free. As a matter of fact, I am. Thank you.
I started at the bottom, but to uh, follow my progress, you'd have to dig a hole. <laughs> You're a bright boy. You'll get along. What's the matter? You in a hurry? No, but uh, don't you think you ought to make that phone call? Yeah, I think I will. Excuse me. Nita, I want to... I hope you've enjoyed Nick's hospitality. Nita, I want to talk to you. You have been very nice and fairly quiet all during dinner. I find I like you better that way. I've said this so many times without meaning it. Look, Nita, you've got to believe me. This isn't just conversation. This is the real thing. Look, why don't you... Don't bother to apologize. Just get out. Nita, listen to me. Please, just go. You're afraid of Nick. That's it, isn't it? No. I love Nick. You don't seem to be able to understand. Don't hand me that. What can Nick mean to you? A pair of dice that reads seven? First class in the Queen Elizabeth, Miami in the winter? Yes, this you can understand. But it means much more than that to me. And this you will never understand. You're afraid of him. Goodbye. I'm sorry I'm laid on. Don't be angry. But you're two hours late. I know, and I'm very sorry. Why didn't you call me? Ellen, please. You look so tired, Jack. I am. I've been out in the jungle hunting. You're an idiot, you know. You've ruined my stew. Does that mean I have to marry you? I refuse. I wouldn't marry you if you were the last man on earth. Unless you ask me. Matrimony is a state I don't recognize. It's not love, it's pots and pans and a conversational fistfight every Saturday night with a paycheck as the purse. Say, something's missing in here. From the chest? That's right, the dentist. What did you do with this picture? I felt guilty looking at it. You didn't throw it away. No. It's in the drawer. Never throw old bows away, Ellen. Save them all and make a quilt. Come on. Sit down. I'll be right with you. You must be half starved by now. You haven't eaten yet, have you? Oh, no, no. earlier gets here, tell... Never mind. I've been waiting for you, Jack. I got your message at the paper. At least I guess it was from you. Of course it was me. Who'd you think it was? Oh, I couldn't be sure. You didn't leave your name. Think I should have? <laughs> I guess not. What's it all about, Nick? Something important has come up. Could be very profitable to you. What is it? This could mean real money to you. That's the kind I like. Maybe 5,000. Huh. I've got to leave. Walk out with me. I 
can't explain everything to you right now, but come to my apartment tonight. I may be working. I can't be sure where I can get away. Be there before nine, can't you? I think so. Be sure you get there before nine. What's so special about nine? I got a call. I don't know what it's about, but it seems important. Our own time. What? Nothing. So I've got to leave at nine sharp. Tonight? Of course tonight. I mean tonight. Didn't you understand I was talking about tonight? Yes, yes, I'll be there. All right. I'm afraid I can't wait. I never thought early it'd be late when it came to money. You've done a beautiful job of messing me up. Now I'm afraid you better take a cab. Well, all right, dear. Mike. trying to tell me that it's no good? No, my question is, is it too good? Look, the police have my story. They questioned me again this morning. I've told it over and over again. I had an appointment with Nick. He never did tell me what it was all about. I was late. I tried to catch him in the garage. When I got there, the car was smoking. A couple of seconds later, the bomb went off. 
Composition, lighting, focus, all perfect. <laughs> Listen. You may not believe this, but I'm allergic to bombs. If I even suspect that I'm in the same room with one, I can't help it. I just have to leave. Funny, I feel the same way when I'm in the room with a liar. However you got it, it was just about the greatest news photo ever snapped. Life and time are reprinting it. Our feature syndicate's got a beautiful contract for you. From now on, you're out of the snake pit. Only special assignments. Mother told me there'd be moments like this. Don't kid me, Early. You never had a mother. You were put together in some machine shop. You can think, but you can't feel. You're stepping all over people and climbing all over them to get to the top. You're no good. You're no good at all. And you're green with envy, Glover. You've got no guts. You don't hate me because of any photographs I took. You hate me because of Ellen. You're in love with her. You've been in love with her for years, but you haven't got nerve enough to come out from behind your desk. Run away, Glover. The truth hurts. David, how is he? Oh, he's as good as he ever was. He'll be out in a few days. Did he sign the contract? No. Did you talk about it? Well, sort of. I'll discuss it with him when he gets out. Did you tell him what's involved? No, I didn't. And I'd rather that you didn't either. I have to be going, Ellen. I'll see you later. Hello, baby. I wondered when you'd be around. Oh, I came the first moment I could. I rubbed that lamp a little too hard this time. You blew up in my kisser. It's a miracle you weren't killed. How do you feel? Great. Sit down. Jack, that Palmer picture's causing so much talk. I spent the entire morning turning down magazine offers for you. I've had offers? At least ten. I love being able to tell them to go jump in the lake. Hey, wait a minute. Our publisher was terribly impressed. If those offers are on the level... He told David to sign you to a feature contract matching the best of the offers. I don't want a contract. I think I can do better now playing the field. Well, there's a little more to it than that. They had quite a talk. He sort of implied that if David didn't get you, he might lose his job. Well, it's too bad for David because I'm not signing. Jack. I'm not signing with anyone. The way I figure it, I can cash in more on that picture if I freelance. But David gave you your first break. I earned what I got. I don't need to feel grateful to anybody. Darling, it's only a one-year contract. I can't spare the time. Jack, I... I, I hate to ask you this, but... But for me... Jack, as a matter of decency. Decency is another word that goes with it. Integrity. Look, Ellen, I've known a lot of guys that talked about decency and integrity. I knew a guy once, a wonderful old man, a genius with a camera. He used to take pictures of trees and clouds and children playing in the sands at Ocean Beach. He tried to show me the beauty he saw in people in the world. He was a great man, Ellen, and there were others. Guys with paintbrushes, guys with typewriters. I even knew one who had a butcher shop. And you know what? They all starved to death. Decency and integrity are fancy words, Ellen, but they never kept anybody well fed. And I've got quite an appetite. Yes, I'll see. I just wanted to tell you how sorry I am. Thanks for sending all those messages of sympathy. I guess I know better than most what Nick meant to you. And I can appreciate better than most what you meant to Nick. That's the nicest speech I've heard all week. Nita, if there's anything I can do, money or, or anything. Nick didn't exactly leave me penniless. 
I'm trying to offer my friendship, Nita. He didn't leave me friendless, either. I'm no longer with the paper. And I find myself a big-time photographer, all because of that, that picture of... It was a miracle that I happened to take a picture of Nick at that moment. I read all about it in the papers. I had an appointment with Nick, and I was late. I know. I feel like a ghoul. I, I feel guilty somehow. There's no need for you to feel guilty. It's not as if you were responsible for Nick's death. I have several assignments that'll take me out of the country. When I get back, I want... I want you to call on me if you need help for anything. All right, Jack. If I ever need you, I'll call for help. Thank you. Goodbye, Jack. Thanks, Ted. It's good to be back. I saw your pictures of China, and look, they were simply terrible. No, I mean wonderful. You know what I mean. I know what you mean, darling. And I thank you. Good evening. Nita, you look wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for the bracelet. But you're not wearing it. It doesn't go very well with what I'm wearing tonight. But it is very nice. And very expensive. Yes. Nita. Yes? What do I have to do to make you understand how I feel about you? Rob a bank? I think you made yourself clear. Then why don't you do something about it? I am. Good evening, Mrs. Palmer. Nice to see you. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Spencer. Mr. Spencer. Good evening. What beautiful pearls. Thank you. Very few people recognize natural pearls as quickly as you do. <laughs> you get to know the things you love best. And pearls have always been a great favorite of mine. <laughs> oh, I wanted... Excuse me. Hello, Early. Oh, hello. Why didn't you return my call? Got tied up. It's a big spread my magazine wants, Early. A room-by-room -room layout of the Worthington Mansion and coverage of the big charity ball to be held there. I'd do a layout of a flea party and a Bowery flop house if there's enough money in it, but you won't pay the fare. We're offering you our top rates. The top's too low. Are pearls expensive? What? Never mind. The Worthingtons are one of the most important families in the country. At that ball will be a concentration of the wealthiest families in the country. Yeah, I know. Great contacts. I mean wealthy in a way you don't know. By just the jewelry that will be worn that night will represent millions of dollars. Well, that's wealthy in a way I don't know. And you can arrange a schedule to suit yourself, so long as the layout of the house is done in time to run it with the coverage of the ball. The Worthingtons will be very cooperative. Any other photographers? Exclusive coverage by Jack Early. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Hi, 
All right, Chad. Well, look who's here. Yeah, he's changed. Hello, Glover. Well, Mr. Early. I see you're still wearing that vest. Would you like me to tell you why I'm still here? Not particularly. Maybe some other time. Where's Ellen? She's away for the weekend. I believe she mentioned Portland. Portland? Yes, Portland. Nice place. Nice people. But she'll be back Monday. She'll be back Monday. But I'm afraid... Bye, Barbara. Mr. Early, I'm sorry I can't show you the rest of the house myself. I hadn't expected you today. Oh, I guess I shouldn't have come on Sunday. I can come back tomorrow. Perhaps one of the servants can show you through the house. That would be fine. Oh, uh, Mrs. Worthington, if it's all right with you, I'd like to wander around alone and sort of get the feel of the place. That sounds very sensible. I'll tell everyone you're to have free run of the house. Thank you. Will you excuse me? Of course. trying to reach you. I wanted to see you long before this, but I've, I've been so busy. Forgive me? Jack, I I'm very tired. Please, Ellen. Trains always tire me, and I haven't eaten since noon. Have dinner with me, Ellen. No, I think I'll just take what I can find here and fall right into bed. Please, Ellen. I must talk to you. It's a matter of life or death. It's been so long since we've seen each other. I've missed you, Ellen. I didn't miss you at all. What was this life or death matter you wanted to speak to me about? I just wanted to talk to you, Alan. It's been so long. I've missed you enormously, Alan. I found Europe as empty as a paper bag. Nothing but cafes, cathedrals, hotels and people selling each other their crown jewels. Well, I guess you're tired. Maybe we ought to save this for some other time. As long as you're here, there are a few things I'd like to say. I... I spent the weekend in Portland. Yes, I know. How is your dentist? It's all over. It has been for some time. I just went up there to make it official and clean. Do you remember my telling you that David would lose his job if you didn't sign that contract? Yes, but he didn't lose it. He's still there. He told the publisher if you remained on the paper, he'd quit anyway. He said that people like you were bad for the whole profession of journalism. Our publisher agreed with him. David said you were a ruthless opportunist with no feeling for anyone but yourself. He said that you would inevitably get into trouble you couldn't get out of and that you'd probably drag a lot of people down with you. What are you trying to tell me, that Glover doesn't like me? I knew that the first day I met him. I'm trying to tell you that David is right. I'm telling you in the slight hope that you might listen to him and think about it. I don't believe in that kind of thing. David makes a lot of sense, Jack. You'd do well to listen to him. Sure he makes sense. 
He's trying to poison your mind against me because he's in love with you. Oh, Jack. You'd better go. I might as well. And Jack, please, don't come here anymore. You'll change your mind. We've been too close. Precisely. What do you want? The world on a platter, the Italian Riviera, gin rummy at a dollar a point. In other words, money. Yeah, you've all you're gonna get from us. Beat it. Take it easy, Harry. This time I'm giving, not taking. Pay attention to me, and the first thing you know, you can throw away your gun. Exhibit A, the Worthington Estate. Bedrooms, grounds, the works. Exhibit B, floor plan of the ballroom, showing the disposition of the armed guards. I don't go in for this, and you know it. Exhibit C, six especially engraved invitations. They'll roll out the red carpet for you and your boys, Harry, and you can use it to wrap up the million dollars worth of jewelry they'll come staggering in under. I thought that would interest you. Incidentally, uh, there's a wall safe in that panel in the library if you have time for it. Okay, I'm interested. What's the deal on this? Well, since I'm only planning it and you're carrying it out, I won't be greedy. Let's say, uh, 25% for you and your boys. You think we're worth it? Go on, get out of here before I throw you out. I, uh, think I can persuade you to change your mind. You change the deal, I'll change my mind. What do you mean, change the deal? Make it 50-50 instead of 75-25. All right, 50-50. What about that one? We won't be needing this one now. I've got some more groundwork to do. Study those pictures very carefully. I'll check with you later. This looks like a pushover, Harry. Everything's laid down laps. Yeah. There's only one thing I don't like about it. Early? Harry, maybe I should... Nothing doing. I'd take a chance on that negative he's got getting into the wrong hands, but... knocking off a newspaper man just isn't being done this season. Unless... Get me the number of the Bayview Club. Come in. Oh, Jack, darling. The pearls are beautiful. I was beginning to think this bot would end in a draw. <laughs> Listen, baby. I'm coming into an awful lot of money in the next few days, so get your passport in order. Get visas for Italy, England, and France. We'll have a lot of fun together. You can show me the real Paris. We'll visit your hometown. Chartres. Uh, Char Chartres. I can never say it the way you do. What's the matter, darling? It's been some time since Nick's death. Yes. Time enough for the police to close the case. Time enough for everyone to have forgotten Nick. I haven't forgotten him. That's why I've waited as long as I have. Nita, I want to marry you. Don't say no, Nita. Don't make up your mind tonight. Think it over. I'll think it over. I'll let you know, Jack. Right, Mr. Early. 
I'm Harry Colton. I know. Nick and me weren't friends. I know. But he was the kind of a guy, well, regular like, you know what I mean. Look, Colton, suppose you tell me what this is all about. Well, it's like I said, I wasn't in love with Nick, and Nick wasn't in love with me. So you can put this down as a grudge. I'm here to tell you who killed him. Go on. A photographer. You know who I mean. Is this an idea of yours, or have you any proof? Proof is for lawyers. He did it, that's all there is to it. Tell me something. How do you happen to know early? Is it because of that holder picture in the papers? No, the one that wasn't in the papers. Early got our faces that day. He just happened to be passing by. He came to see us, and I still feel that visit in my pocketbook. So that's the way it was. But he said... Oh, if I were sure, I... Hey, wait a minute. I don't want what I told you to get you into trouble. Now, Nick was smart about these things. Oh, Nick. Nick. I still can't figure out why he wanted to get rid of Nick. I can. I can. Take it easy, Mrs. Palmer. I'd like to fix it myself because of what he did to me. But it's got to be done right. Colton, you can help me. You know about such things. Well, Hurley came to me with a deal today. Will you help me? That's what I'm talking about. But it'll have to be timed. We'll have to work out everything very carefully. Now, there's this ball at the Worthington Mansion. Near the ballroom is a library. This should be the library. Yes, it is. Now I'd like one of the two of you uh, standing at the top of the staircase about to make an entrance. Mrs. Palmer's in the library. Nina? Jack. Nita. You have about 15 minutes. What are you talking about? You wouldn't understand. It has nothing to do with big cars and expensive jewels. Nita, you're crazy. I didn't. You didn't what? Nita, I love you. There's nothing I wouldn't do for you, nothing I haven't done for you. You and I are the only ones who didn't forget Nick. Me because I loved him. And you because you killed him. Nita, I didn't kill Nick. Are you out of your mind? If you kill me, you'll be caught and it'll be all for nothing. I didn't kill Nick. Colton's man brought me, and he'll pick me up right there, after Colton's business is finished. Colton? Yes, Colton. We timed you right into your own plan. It was Colton that killed Nick. Don't you see, Nita? You're being tricked. Don't you see? Yes, I see. I can prove I didn't do it. I can prove it. Go ahead. Prove it. Let me make a call. I can have something brought out here that'll prove it wasn't me. I can get it here in ten minutes. Let me call. All right. Go ahead. But don't do anything silly. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me. Hello? Yes, I know. Listen to me. This is terribly important. I'm at the Worthington Estate in Burlingame. 
I want you to get into a cab and bring me that picture that's on the mantelpiece. You know, the dentist. Please don't ask any questions, Ellen. Just believe me when I tell you it's a matter of life or death. I'm sorry, Jack. We're having a birthday party here for David. Please, Ellen, I've got to have that picture. I hid something behind it. If you don't get into a cab and... Jack, you're being silly. Don't you understand? My days of catering to your whims are over. Ellen, for the love of... If you ever cared anything about me... I'm sorry, Jack. I just can't. Ellen! Well? Well? That new kid, the one who covered the ball. Keller? It's a good picture. Yes, sir? Uh, let's hear your lead. Um, shortly before midnight last night at the Worthington Charity Ball, Jack Early, world-renowned photographer, in a magnificent display of courage, foiled a robbery attempt and went to his death, photographing his own murderer in the act as he died. All right, you were there. Thanks, Mr. Glover. It's a great picture. And I'll bet for the first time, he really just happened to be passing by.